Okay, um, I thought I'd carry on with this headstock veneer and glue it on because I mean it's quite a fragile thing and you don't want it laying around sort of thing. Um, so get it glued on where it's nice and looked after and well supported. It's a bit more of a tricky job than it, than you think. Firstly, you know it's a thin bit of bit of veneer, so it has a tendency to curl and all this. So the first thing you want is like a clamping call to push over it, so you get an even pressure on it, and to to sort of make that better as well. It's a it's a very good idea to put like. Um, the soft bottom on the clamping called a thin soft bottom and I've got a bit of cardboard glued on this and so you know when you clamp it up you get a nice even pressure otherwise guaranteed you you know you'll get a corner lifting or you'll get something and you won't get it pushed down um, the other thing is is cover your veneer headstock veneer with a, a, a plastic bag I use packing tape because you know I glue it down with like um, tight bond and you know it's a thin veneer so glue can actually like get through it and stick to the clamping core so either cover it in polythene um, like I say our packing tapes nice because it sticks and you know you can cut it um, now I removed the nut out of here and I just went over this with my um, Japanese rasp here and just um, made sure it was dead flat. Um, I'm, I put the nut back in in the washer, may as well leave them there, but I've also masked the inside of this um, truss rod nut cavity because I don't want all glue dripping in there and buggering up the threads and the nut and all that and ending up with a mess in there. So that's masked off. Now you've got to, you know, place this on quite carefully. Well, you know, so the, the logo ends up in the right place. Um, so, it, it, you know, it's quite tricky. Then get the clamping call back on, and that's why I use tape, so I haven't got a lot of surfaces that are moving about. And this cardboard is actually glued to the, the, the wooden thing. I mean, it's only a bit of... Bit, literally a bit of cardboard and um, some carpet glue sprayed on there it's not quick to do but <clears throat> yep yeah, so um, we'll get to gluing this on now and um, you don't want like tons of glue otherwise it will like start sliding all over the place and everything just make sure you've got you know I've probably got too much on here actually while I'm chatting away but um, you know you don't want but make sure it goes right up to the edges um, and all over and also I've got the nut line marked there so the the nut is 4.6 millimeters wide so the veneer will end up being cut that's where the, your headstock should start sloping is 4.6 millimeters, 5 millimeters will do from where the front of the nut line is. Um, so you want the veneer to end up there because it's the veneer, you know, you'll be cutting that back to kind of, um, you know, um, make the little slot for the nut kind of thing. So I'm going to scrape a bit of this glue off. I don't want it all on there. But just make sure you get like get like a very even coverage on it, and this is like I say, it's quite a tricky job, really. Um, so now you want to line up the. I can see through this packing tape the line of the front of the moustache thing on there, so I can line that up very accurately with my. Um, front of my headstock that's been routed to shape on here. Give it a squash down because this glue's got quite a bit of suction to it so it'll stop it sliding under clamping but what will happen if you don't get the clamps on quickly because the glue is wet 
the veneer will start as you can see it's starting rolling up there sort of thing and you've got like you know rolling up this side so it's actually like you can see it on there see it see, see how it's cupping and you know that's what that's what makes it difficult so you you want to be ready and get it clamped down pretty quickly otherwise you'll end up with a you know a roll of veneer if you like now I'm not worried about you know clamping it super tight or anything I mean you know I, I, and I don't intend putting protection on the back of the clamp that's another thing to try and bloody line up and whatnot but I've got sanding to do on the back here anyway so final thickness in um, this is going on really nice and don't be tempted to clamp it down really hard with one clamp because obviously the cardboard or your packing will you know your soft packing will squash and everything will get out of line just you know, get the clamps on as quick as you can. You can see I've got moderate pressure on there now, but I've got good glue squeeze all over it. I'll put a couple more clamps here side by side, but I'm just having a check now that I'm absolutely perfect there. I can see the headstock veneer is over the edge evenly all round so another couple of clamps on there and that will hold that down but like I say it's a bit of a tricky job really it's just one of those jobs you know you want to get right and don't for God's sake put the thing on upside down otherwise you'll end up um, with the with a mirror image logo cut out but just snugging these clamps up, not going nuts. shrinking down now a little bit doing the clamping pressure to be honest I prefer using you know that like soft um, soft almost like foam sheet packing stuff you get sometimes if you buy guitar next so like a tube of it or something they are absolutely fantastic for that I mean, we've got glue squeeze out now absolutely everywhere, everywhere here. So I'm happy that veneer is in the right, oh, probably you couldn't see it, could you, I'm an idiot. But you know, you've got good squeeze out everywhere. So, you know, that it that is down properly. So we're good with that. I can put that down to dry now. Um, get on and do the other one. Good, good, thank you. Hi there again. Um, Right, uh, I want to kind of finish off the um, body holes, routings and things like this. And the, the, the one thing I'm, I'm left with doing is actually um, um, drilling the um, um, jack socket hole in the side of the body. Again, one of those like touchy-feely kind of awkward jobs. Um, I did measure it on my drawing here. Now, from the end of the fretboard, the, the center of the hole was 299 millimeters back from there. Now, this is a very accurate drawing of it. I mean, I drew round the guitar and measured these things, and I could actually, like, just, um, you know, have the guitar on a flat surface, put some uh, a right... A, 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 um, you know a set square up against it and draw where the hole was um, and it you know it the center of it worked out to be 299 from the end of the fretboard but you know that that's not really a you know an accurate measurement to locate it so basically I traced it um, I, 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 I so I've laid this body on top of the drawing 
put a, on a flat surface, put a straight edge up and me measured the line of the jack socket. Also with the jack, the jack socket was in the centre, the distance from the top of the hole to the top of the body and the bottom of the hole, the bottom of the body was the same, so it's in the middle of the of the body which works out. I mean I think the total body thickness with the maple is about 48.5 millimetres so half of that is where the jack socket was and when um, I took a photo of it because it's all a bit touchy-feely and you can see that the um, you know the actual square of the you know the plastic surround actually goes on to the binding here sort of thing so it's in the centre of the body not in the centre of the mahogany if you know what I mean. Now um, as for lining it all up um, I drew a line, I, I, I judged where the centre of the hole was, kind of drew a line right across the body which I've actually, um, you probably can't see it but basically that's the line I've got to drill on also with this, um, the, it's a one inch diameter hole, 25.4 millimetres. Now it doesn't go all the way through. It just goes in, um, again, I did it like scaling it. It just sort of goes in about like 30, 33, 34 millimetres. And then the remainder of it is is drilled through with a quarter inch drill. Um, so it basically, um, if I get the other body, in the control cavity here you've got, you've got this thing here, this like lump thing and the hole from the jack socket comes out, this quarter inch hole comes out in the middle of that kind of thing. And believe me, um, The reason why it's a bit, I'm being a bit inaccurate with it, it was, it was not a thing of beauty. It was basically hacked, hacked out and drilled through, and and so wasn't particularly wonderful. Now, um, so I've got a couple of tools here. I've got an inch Frosner bit. I'll see how that goes, and I've also got this spade bit, which are quite good. But the, these tend to jigger around a little bit, so I'd like to do it with the frozen a bit, but don't quite. It feels sharp, but I've had these years. So, um, and what I can do here is line up, you know, with the line I've drawn across for the right line, and then kind of look sideways. Like I say, it's not something I really, really enjoy doing because. Um, uh, it's one of those things where you just got to do it and hope for the best. Need some glasses, which are God knows where because I always put these things down They're here. And uh, yeah, let's give it a go. I mean, like I say, you just got to do it. You can't kind of oh, I make a jig for it. I've thought about it, and oh God, here we go. Well, that frozen bit is as blunt as my ass, so let's go with the spade bit and see how we get on. about the right line. <sighs> Just check how deep we are. I want to be it is on the corner here, it nearly actually breaks through into the cavity. So 
I think I want to be about Well, it's 29 millimetres deep. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I dare say it was, it was just done, you know, to 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 an arbitrary depth. I doubt whether it was. I doubt whether it was a. Um, exact thing I've got about five millimeters to go hopefully this will poke the end of this will poke through into the yeah we're nearly there what are we Little bit more fraction, more. Right, there we are, and I can see that we've actually broken through a little bit. So, from my drawing, yeah, I've, I've just like, actually stopped short of my drawing because I don't want to risk busting through into the um, I mean I'm only a couple of mil busting through the control cavity sort of thing so now I can get like a a quarter inch drill and finish it off or I actually measured the hole at seven millimeters but I'm guessing it's a quarter inch hole that's been like um, butchered that's too much that's the slightly too big this possibly could be it that's a quarter inch that's actually a quarter inch hole but it was near a seven so Do you know what I'm going to drill through with a quarter inch because I'm I'm sure that's what it was, that's what it's meant to be. There we go. So we've got our hole drilled now where it should be. Um, if we measure down, let's zero this. So we're, we're 12 mil from the bottom of the body, 11.4 millimeters from the bottom of the body there, and 11.43 millimeters at the top, and we've got. Uh, We've ended up with a hole that's a bit bigger, which you tend to, is it? Yeah, what have we got? Yeah, we're 20, 26.06 millimeters wide on that, which is hardly surprising with those spade things, they wobble a little bit, but like I say, the original was not a thing of beauty at all. <coughs> Just a complete hack job. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, very happy now. Got that done. It's not a, for some reason, it's a job I don't like doing very much because it's all a bit, it's all a bit like grunchy sort of thing. But you can see um, the hole, we've come out exactly in the middle of this kind of like um, recess thing, exactly where it should be coming out. So I'm, I'm sure we're pretty accurate with it. So there we go, I'll get on and do the other one now. Well, hi there again. Um, what I've just been doing, I didn't bother videoing in it. I've just been um, trimming this binding down to the top of the the, the arch top. And I, I basically I did it with that. 
and my cabinet scraper sort of thing. It, it, it's quite tricky doing it around these cutaways and I've still got a bit of tidying up to do but literally you know you can just you know you can see the little little shavings of plastic it takes off but basically I don't know if you remember we started off with it's quite critical to get this maple the right thickness on the front because that's where you work out your neck angle from just go back um, back or forward back to when we started doing the arch top and cutting that uh, angle for the neck so that thickness of that that um, maple there was 3.3 millimeters then the depth of slot we did with my jig for the for the binding was something like uh, I can't remember how deep that was but 4.5 or something we we put put round round the the 4.4 we put round the edge with my depth binding cutting jiggy woody thing um, which actually it's it's 4.5 millimeters is, is as near as damn it three sixteenths of an inch so this binding is three thirty second of an inch by three sixteenth of an inch now what I'm really pleased at do you remember you know we thicknessed our first step for doing the the contoured top um, with my you know router jigs and the, the the contour jigs kind of thing so I went round cut the 3.3 millimeter first ridge sort of thing then when we finished the top we used me um, fancy contour following um, jig so I've I have to, to cut the binding slots so then glued the binding in and the really nice thing is now is this binding like I say should be 3 16th of an inch thick all the way round now it's an even thickness all the way round you can see that so well pleased with that I've got no ups or downs in my routing or anything it's everything must have been nice and flat and perfect and when I measure now I've flattened this binding off with the top I actually measure it and look at this really really chuffed um, how can you see it Doom. that's 3 16th of an inch round that round that bind look how perfect that is I'm really really chuffed with that really chuffed you know when things come together like that it's so satisfying so you can see how accurate that is um, so that's wonderful for me you know I mean I replaced the table on my router on my router table with a perfectly flat bit of kitchen work surface before I started these projects and I think that's where I'm paying off because if that table wouldn't have been flat imagine the body sort of slightly going up or down and then I'd have had a wavy wavy binding line but that's a that, that, that's a result isn't it it's to, to get to get that that perfect and then the old funny routing on the bottom here with the chew marks and whatnot get that right it's just yeah that that's that that's what makes me very happy when I do the guitar work um, so there we go so I flattened that off. I mean, there's sanding to do down here. You know, I can feel feel a few bumps and things in there. Um, very small, but you know, we really, you know, we've really got the body done. The only thing I've got left to do is this little radius on the back, round the edge. Now I've got a round over bit, but it's it's fractionally small. Um, it, it actually says it's right but I think it's fractionally small so I might do this with just a chamfer bit and then sand it round I think that would be more natural but we'll get to that anyway but I think we've had a cracking cracking day sort of thing the headstock veneers just getting this binding down I mean I've got this body to get the binding down but it's gonna be the same as this so perfectly happy with that and we've got the you know the old owl coming out in the right place there and uh, yeah so cool 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 catch you later
Um, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to do the, the, the rollover on the back. Now I haven't got, I bought this little cutter that's meant to be, um, you know, the right radius for like a Les Paul, but in, in my opinion, it's a little, it's a little too tight. You need to do a bit of extra sanding on top, which I don't think is a bad thing because, um, you know, the, you know, there'll be a lot of wear on that part of the guitar anyway, because it's against your body, but basically, you know, it's, it's, it's your typical, like, um, you know, bearing guided router sort of thing that whizzes round. Um, <clears throat> this is a nice little gadget I've got. Basically, it's, you know, these routers are quarter inch and uh, my bench router is, uh, you know, just takes half an inch. But even if you change the collet on this and it had a quarter inch collet to directly hold the cutter, you you know with these quarter inch um, smaller router cutters they're not very tall so you really struggle to get them sticking out so this is a you know it's a quality bit of kit it's very well balanced but you know you can just put that in there and then you know you're all good so I'll get set up and then we'll we'll try and route the um, the, the radiuses on the back of the body um, it might not work i've never done it on the router table before but considering this is brand new and dead flat it might work out okay but i'll get back to you when we're ready okay here you go i've got this set up um this little rollover bit and you can see i've just cut um a little test piece here that seems fine i don't know quite I, quite like like i say i've done this before from the top but the, the problem you get with it is obviously this is an arch top so the body tends to be rocking around a little bit but we'll just see how this goes and <laughs> actually work quite well what I think I'll do is uh, I might I don't know whether to just go up a fraction I'm gonna do that bit there again that looks that looks as though it might be slightly off slightly too <laughs> It's uh, actually quite nice that um, it's worked out quite well. The second time I went round, I was just pushing down next to the router cutter. I mean, if there's any junk on this surface or it's not quite flat, you know, it's going to ride high. So right, let's let's do the other body now. There we go, so that's, um, can you see that? Yeah, that's a really nice uh, nice roll over on there. I'll be sanding it a bit more, but yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do that on my old router table with it not being flat. Um, but that, that, looks, that looks actually really nice, I'm pleased with that. 
So, um, we, we, I, I suppose we've got to a bit of a pivotal part now because really we've done, we've done everything on the body apart from the, uh, um, you know, sanding and stuff like that. Um, we're all done. I mean, I'm going to leave these furry edges and all that because you know not 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 round the top of the pickup obviously but i'm going to leave these furry edges and stuff because that's what and, and these little steps slight fractional steps in here because they were all like the original um and like in the control cavity where i've got like you know really bad chew mark there sort of thing and a, a little bit there um, I'm leaving those because they were just basically, you know, features of the original guitars as well. Some were routed beautifully, others were a bit rough and ready. So, you know, if I start fettling them with a chisel, the original would have never been like that. It would have either been perfect off the bat sort of thing, or it would have been left, you know, chewy sort of thing. So um, that's what they tend to be like. Now, um, what I think I might do next, I'm debating, um, really it would be quite nice to get the, the neck joint in the ballpark before I glue the, um, before I glue the fretboards on the neck. I mean, you know, we've got the necks here now, um, so, you know the fretboard can be positioned and glued on because I like to do that before I like cut the the plan view of the neck I like the fretboard on um, and before I carve the neck just a personal thing um, you know you've got the complete neck in your hand and as you carve it you can like you know you can like feel the, the playing finish which you can't do without the without the fretboard on so I, li I like to do that but the one thing here is I think you know I mean the neck the necks obviously like um, they don't slip in on this one because of that little bit of binding stuck there but on this one um, you know I've just trimmed that out a little bit um, and fit the neck in but you know we've we, we've got it exactly you know it, as I've boasted before really about the, the the you know the surface of the of the net the fretboard being exactly parallel exactly level with the surface of the body there with our 3.5 angle but god I'm, I'm I'm going on about that and I but like um here you can see um on the neck obviously this was cut square originally this shoulder will be where about the 16th and little bit of fret come sort of thing where the fretboard comes but you need to cut this at an angle now um, and I'd like to get that close before the fretboard goes on um, mainly because you know you can't get a saw to it you know once the fretboard is on you've got you know, you, you, the only thing you can do is chisel sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is get this, um, let's do this one first. Two things, a couple of things we have to do. have to make sure that this surface is absolutely square. Um, this front, the front, the front surface is absolutely square. So I'll be running my rasp over that and just making sure it's square. Um, trim the the binding off and then we can start like getting the neck in the ballpark sort of thing I mean I won't finalize the joint until I've got the fretboard on and everything like that so let me start with that and I'll get back to you well hi there doing this neck joint now I've been filing the front of this flat and the way I do that is literally I just spend a long time with this rasp the good old rasp and just put it on the front and like just you know go over it 
and over it you can this is wide enough to keep level it's really nice but what I also do is I put um, wherever my pencil went I, I, I put pencil lead all round so you can see when you've you know you've made it flat sort of thing you know it's rubbed the pencil lead off but literally just I mean I do use the coarse side of the file because it seems to cut better on the end grain and just keep going over it and you can see now well, on this edge it hasn't quite got flat on there yet but you can see it's all scraped around the edge here um, also what I do is I just chamfer the edge of the neck here make sure there's a little chamfer there because like with these shoulders you know you never clean out the shoulders really well but I mean and, and the, but do the best you can and take off you know just you know the, 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 the remainder of the wood you've got in there that doesn't make it a perpendicular so what we can do now is at least this this neck is going to fit in like nice and square sort of thing um, so what I'm going to do now is clamp this neck in and then make sure it's in the center and try and do some angles across here so let's stay upright get a G clamp A bit of wood, so probably do. And now that's as far in as it will go, sort of thing. But what we what we want to do now is just basically like check that the the neck is. It's a bit difficult to do with it. There's the clamp on there, but move the clamp over. Um, I can check down, down the neck. And I've still got my centre line on here, so if we go down the centre of the, that's it. I mean, we're absolutely perfect on there. So now what I want to do is these little wedges that are left here. You can actually, you see that's not tight down, but. Fairly tight down on there. Not bad on here, but yeah, th 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 this can be a bit like fiddly but what you want to do is draw on the neck like a parallel line uh, draw a parallel line to the body and then you can get you get the angle correct so I'll get doing that I mean sometimes it's, 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 it's just as easy to do it by eye than it is to actually measure stuff but we'll try to get both sides the same we'll do a little measure in there we're about three millimeters away we're more here I can see that are we 
Oh no, I think it will be a good start. Um, if I just try, yeah, you can see that I'm just running this parallel to the Okay, I think we can actually start with that. So we've got that little angle to cut away there now. And then that little angle on there. I suppose you could file it or cut it. I prefer to do it with a saw. Um, just gives a cleaner result. But uh, yeah, let's cut that off and see where we go. One thing I wanted to check You know the thing is, if if your shoulders aren't aren't right to start with, and mine aren't quite right, but I'm going to start like um, like I've marked, and then you know we we'll, we we'll get a bit closer, and then a bit closer, and a bit closer. So right, I'll get back to you when I've sawn this. I'm just using my um an old fret saw I've got um, that's quite quite nice but it tends to the fret for fret work it tends to cut slightly too wide so keep it for just nice solid <laughs> tenon saw Okay then, let's have a look, see if we've improved matters with a fit. Well, you can see we, we're not too bad there. Um, it's actually really good there um, you know for a first effort but on this side we've got like a horrendous gap so what I'm thinking is um, well it, it, at least it's a consistent gap it's about like probably one millimeter one and a half millimeters so I'm guessing that my shoulders one side to the other aren't in the same place so let's have a look just want to have a look on the back it's difficult to see but we can actually see that I'm matched up on the shoulder that side but I'm a bit off it that side so this side um, let's have a look again think I'll check that again because like it should be this side that actually needs to needs to be uh, trimmed back a little bit let's have a look yeah we can see on there that I want to trim that side back a little bit and then we should be 
ballpark sort of thing so that's all I'm going to do is just take a little bit more off here I mean I found that, that, that doing this sort of stuff is like you know just just better by eye really than, than tons of measuring close we are now then I mean we're getting very close there and oops we're getting very close there now you can see I mean this neck is actually fractionally higher than the you know there's a lip there but be close there and we're actually a bit further away that side now but we are getting in the in the ballpark so it's just really a matter of um, fettling away but don't you know don't keep hacking loads off obviously you've only got a limited amount you can take off but um, there we go I'll, I'll just do the rest with a chisel now I can actually see this shoulder this side is slanted a little bit so I'll square that up and then uh, I'll bring you back well hi there I, I've literally just spent another 10 minutes um, on this joint I mean that's pretty darn good I mean the shadow you can see is actually just because the neck is slightly wider than the body at that point that's pretty darn good and this side we very 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 near that um, you know it's actually touching at the top so it probably just needs flattening out a little bit but I don't really want to go any further than that now um, so um, basically you know if we look at this now in there um, can you see that yeah I, I just literally want to check that center line which is crucial I mean that that is really really good the other thing I want to check as well as I'm sure this will be right as we've um, you know is how the neck lies on the body looking from the end that it's not tipped or anything but I'm sure we're perfect there which which we are um, so I'm going to actually destine this neck to um, this guitar now so we will label this number one and we'll put number one in there so that's all pretty darn that's all pretty darn good and and the one thing now is we've got exactly on that joint there where we want the 16th fret to be or, or just a 16th and a bit more so the fretboard is going to be glued on almost exactly there just with the 16th um, there's the 15th fret, 16th fret just over the edge of the binding and then you know it lines up then with the with the end of the the pick the the, the pickup cavity as well so yeah we're all good there that's absolutely fine great hi well what what i've done here um i've just actually hacked this bit of the neck off 
kind of thing so I can actually put a pickup um, cover roughly in where I want it. I mean there's there's got to be more work done on this cut off obviously it's got to go down into the you know the deep part of the route there but now we can just make sure that the 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 pick guard and the pick guard the the the, the, the fretboard and everything like you know um, you can see on there that, and this is lined up at this end that's lined up at this end and then we can see that the you know the the pickup you know is in the right place sort of thing with the end of the fretboard and whatnot so that's all pretty good there and um, yeah I'm quite happy with that so and we can get on and put, put some plans to formulate some plans to glue the glue the fretboard on the neck now so there we go well hi there I'm I'm, I'm still fixating over this uh, neck and joint and things like that really you know um, you get into the point now where where details are you know you you can't get things in the ballpark they've got to be dead right um, so what I've done is I've put the fretboard on exactly where it should be um, not back and forth this way but basically you know um, in from looking down exactly where it should be and I've drawn these lines up on the body sort of thing which are basically projections from the from the edge of the fretboard and I thought that one was slightly wrong there um, so that I mean it does get it does get a bit awkward doing it but I'll explain in a moment um, so you know we've got the fretboard uh, exactly where we want it and I just want it uh, okay So it's that outer line there and the slight inner one, inner one there, looking at that. So um, right, we'll get back to that in a moment. But what I wanted to do was show you this. Um, this is the picture of the guitar I had. And you could see that the front pickup is, is absolutely against the fretboard. Um, now, I've looked at, just had a cup of coffee and I looked at two other, three other 53 um, Les Pauls, which are for sale on Reverb and untouched ones sort of thing. And there is a distinct gap between the end of the fretboard and the pickup on the three that I looked at. Um, and I, I've seen this before sort of thing, you know, where, where you know, you have... Um, uh, you know a little bit of variation in the guitars because the necks were 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 joined by hand so um, you know they slid around a little bit but um, so basically um, you know we, we I'd, I'd like to get a little gap I'd like to get a little gap there so um, that's what that's what I'm gonna shoot for because you know we, we've got basically like when the pickup goes in there, so you know providing there's a little gap there, that's kind of fine. Um, so we we look good, we look good there. Um, now getting back to this like plan view of the neck, um, let's get another pickup cover out. The thing is that if your neck is like out of line, um, things look awkward because you have weird, you know, the strings go over the pickups, the strings don't go over the pickup poles, they're, you know, they're, they're a little bit out sort of thing. Um, so what I want to do here is check 
got the centre line of the body there, which is you can see is right running exactly through the centre of the pickups here between the two inner poles. So if we actually um, yeah, that's zero. If we actually measure out from that centre line to these two projections of the fretboard we put on, with 31.37 that side, now you want to go to the outer one there, look, we're, absol we're absolutely spot on both sides. So that's perfect. What about the front one? A bit less. So we we are we are. I mean, the pickup should go a bit this way. The actual covers, the 52 covers, are a little different from these. But um, I mean, we're absolutely perfect. You know that 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 is really good and it's about at this stage that you really want to be certain that that everything is lining up otherwise um, you know you glue the neck on and the pickup cavities aren't in line and then everything gets everything gets very untidy looking so sorry to be taking a lot of time on this but you know it's important that you check that everything is lining up nicely otherwise you know you end up <clears throat> you end up with a guitar that just just doesn't look right because you know the strings don't go over the pickup poles or um, you know stuff like that so there we go so I think um, you know the thing now that I need to do is to um, Uh, just get this this fretboard now lengthwise where I want it I mean obviously this cut here oh, I've got to get the fretboard now he did the fretboard widthwise which is quite easy to do because you can line it up here at this end and then you've just got slight edges there on the neck that I've got to trim off um, but lengthwise the fretboard like really you know I've cut this part of the neck here and that is the where the obviously where the pickup is so providing I come just slightly forward of that um, we're pretty good okay so I think we're getting there all right I'll get back to you